Okay, so in math, it's really important that you have the ability to estimate values. And here I have a nice, lovely question for you. We want to find a quick estimate for the square root of 800,000. And obviously, we do not want to use our calculators. We want to practice our skills in estimating values pretty quickly. So uh, just to kind of a couple things to take note here. Uh, this symbol in math is the approximation symbol. Okay, so we want to find an approximate value. And uh, this symbol here is the equal sign. That would mean uh, kind of find the exact value. So we're not going to use our calculator. But uh, here's the thing. We want to balance how quick um, we can find this estimate. Because you could spend a lot of time here kind of using trial and error to come up with a pretty good, accurate answer. But again... Uh, when you're estimating values, you also want to balance the amount of time. So it's kind of a an art form. But uh, there's a couple different uh, unique approaches that you could take. I'm going to show you what I think is the best approach uh, to answer this question in just one second. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you pretty much the correct answer. And then, of course, you could judge uh, how well you estimated the value for the square root of 800,000. Okay, so, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades, and it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go to take a look at the answer. So the square root of 800,000, if you were to put that into your calculator, this is pretty much the answer you would get. You would get 894, and of course I kind of rounded this off, but uh, this is a pretty accurate estimation for the answer, okay, for the square root of 800,000. So depending upon your estimate, okay, I would say if you're plus or minus uh, 50, from this value, I think that's a pretty decent estimate. Okay, so you'll have to judge for yourself whether in fact you uh, got this right. And again, uh, the idea here is to do this problem pretty quickly. No, I would say maybe within a minute or two at the most to come up with an estimate, okay? All right, but uh, if you uh, got a good estimate pretty quickly, we must celebrate that by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of estimating values. It just sounds so cool to say things like that. They'll be like, uh, yeah, you think you're a math genius, don't you? And you'll say, yes, indeed, I am well on my way to be uh, the next Einstein. Okay, so again, we're talking about estimating and a lot of you might be saying, well, why do I need to estimate when I have my calculator? Well, uh, estimating values is really important because oftentimes we will not have our calculators and uh, other times it's not really um, necessary to have exact values. Okay, You just kind of want to figure out generally the value of something. This really comes into play in science as well. I can recall back in my uh, university days when I was taking a um, uh, calculus-based physics. So for those of you that don't know what physics is, it's an awesome course. And physics, uh, the language of physics is mathematics. And I was uh, taking a calculus-based physics uh, one-year course. Uh, and in that course, uh, for most of our exams, calculators were not allowed. The teacher didn't care about the exact answer. Okay, they wanted to see your ability just to use formulas and understand the concepts and just kind of get ballpark figures. That's most, you know, kind of more important than actually, you know, plugging in values into your calculator. So a lot of um, you out there are going to be studying science programs or engineering and things like that. Or you may or may not, but you, sometimes we don't need exact uh, values. We just need a pretty good value and we need it pretty quickly. And um, anyways, so estimating is a very important math skill. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution. And here is the problem. And there's different approaches to do this uh, problem or to come up with an estimate, right? I'm going to show you what kind of comes to mind when I do this problem. So here is the square root of 800,000. We're looking for an approximate value and we want to kind of come up with this pretty quickly. 
So the first thing I'm going to be thinking about, and I'm going to illustrate this property using this uh, simple example right here, is uh, some properties of square roots. So the square root of 16 is 4. Okay, hopefully you knew that because 4 times 4 is 16. All right, so if you understand that, no problem, right? So we'll just keep this in mind. We know that the square root of 16 is 4, and I'm bringing that up because I want to kind of illustrate a big point here about square roots. Let's take a look at a property of square roots that I'm going to be using to uh, estimate the value of the square root of 800,000. So indeed, we know that the square root of 16 is 4, but I'm going to do this a different way, okay? I'm going to uh, write, or I'm going to think of 16 as, I'm going to come up with some factors. In other words, I'm going to think of two numbers such that when I multiply them together, I get back to 16. So I could think of the square root of 16 as the square root of 4 times 4, because 4 times 4 is obviously 16. So that's another way to kind of express this problem. Now, the reason why I did that is uh, there is a property of square roots and radicals. Okay, this little symbol in mathematics is called a radical, which uh, basically tells us or allows us to kind of pull apart this one big square root into two separate square roots of these factors. Okay, so four times four, this is, uh, these are factors of 16. Okay, so I can rewrite this one big square root of 4 times 4 as uh, uh, the square root of 4 times the square root of 4. In other words, I'm breaking up this one big square root into two small square roots. And now I can just kind of figure out what the square root of 4 is, right? So the square root of 4 is obviously 2, and the square root of 4 here is 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, now this is a very long kind of uh, uh, way to figure out what the square root of 16 is. Of course, we know it's 4. But I'm just kind of using this basic example to illustrate this property. And I'm going to use this particular property of square roots. It's something you absolutely need to know to uh, come up with a quick estimation for the square root of 800,000. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step. And of course, that is to have you subscribe to my channel if you have not yet subscribed. Uh, if you are a current subscriber, I thank you so much. Uh, subscribe For those of you that um, have not yet subscribed and for those of you that have, I'm just going to tell you right now, this really has a major positive impact on the growth of my channel. Really what I'm trying to do is reach as many people as possible and try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. I've been teaching this. I've uh, been teaching math for decades, and I think the number one reason why people struggle in mathematics is oftentimes um, it's just taught in an overly technical manner, okay? And it, you know, students just can kind of get lost, and they get frustrated. They're like, you know what? This stuff is confusing. Well, you know what? You know, if you use easy-to-understand language, it just makes everything much, much better, and that is my objective. And if you do subscribe, make sure to hit that notification button. Uh, that's really important, as I am posting all the time. By the way, just a quick com comment. I do have over 2,000-plus videos on my YouTube channel. I cover basic math to advanced math and calculus and everything in between, so please take advantage of all my content. If you want my best instruction, just follow those links in the description. Back to the problem. Okay, so here we go. We have the square root of 800,000. And now that I kind of illustrated um, this concept that we can kind of look for factors, we could take a big number, okay, the square root of a big number, we could kind of break it up in its factors. That's what I'm going to be thinking about to um, uh, uh, find a decent uh, estimate or approximation for uh, the square root of 800,000. So what I'm going to think here, and by the way, there's different ways you can approach this. This, this is just the way my mind is kind of working here. So I'm looking at 800,000, like, oh, you know what? 800,000 is the same thing as 8 times 100,000, right? So here are two factors of 800,000. And I want to kind of break this up into uh, factors that I know the square root of, right? So it's, for example, I know the square root of like 100, right? The square root of 100, hopefully, uh, you know, is 10, right? So the square root of 25 is uh, 5, the square root of 36 is 6. So I'm just going to quickly see uh, if I could break this up into factors. Uh, and really, I kind of give you kind of a hint here. I'm looking at 100, right? So I'm like, I got 100,000. I can easily get some 100s as factors and quickly do this. Okay, so let's kind of continue on. I'm going to continue to factor these factors. So we have the square root of 8 times 100,000. 
And I'm thinking, all right, so the square root of 8 times 100,000, I could break up 100,000 as 100 times 1,000. That is 100,000, right? So I'm thinking to myself, oh, wow, look, I know the square root of 100 is 10. So, and I got this 1,000 over here, which is, of course, what, 10 times uh, 100. So we, let's just continue to break this up into its respective factors. All right, so here... And the square root of uh, 8 times 100 times 1,000, I'll break this 1,000 up as uh, 100 times 10. So now I have the square root of 8 times 100 times another 100. And I'm very excited about this because I know I can find the square root of this times 10. All right, so at this point, I'm basically ready to start um, um, making some estimates here. Okay, remember the objective is to go pretty quickly. And there's different approaches you could take to do this problem. You can, in other words, you could, some of you could um, look at different factors. It's perfectly fine uh, as long as you could do this pretty quickly. All right, so let's go ahead and, and uh, take a look at the problem now. We have the square root of 8 times 100 times 100 times 10. And so now we can kind of break these up into in their individual square roots. Okay, so we have the square root of 8 times the square root of 100 times the square root of 100 times the square root of 10. Now, here is where we're going to do some estimating, okay? Now, I need kind of a reference here, all right? And I'm looking at the square root of 8 and the square root of 10. These are decimals that are going to be in my calculator. I already know that the square root of 100 was going to be 10, okay? So that's not a problem. But I'm thinking, well, here, this is 8, this is 10. I know the square root of 9 is equal to 3, is exactly equal to 3. So 8 is a little bit less than 9, and 10 is a little bit more than 9. So I'm just going to kind of compensate. I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm going to just think of these values roughly as 3, okay? Because this is a this right here is going to be actually a little bit less than 3. This right here will be a little bit more than 3. But let's just call both of these 3. Again, the objective here is to estimate. I'm not looking for a perfect answer. I'm looking for a pretty quick estimate. So let's go ahead and do this. And here, I'm just going to think, all right, square root of 8 that's pretty close to the square root of 9. So I'm going to just call that 3. The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 10, I'll just call that 3, although I know it could be a little bit more. And now I'm just going to just do this product real quick, right? So 10 times 10 is 100, right? And then 3 times 3 is 9. So 9 times 100 is 900, okay? Now let's take a look at our estimate or my estimate, okay? So I'm calling the square root of 800,000 approximately 900. If you go into your calculator and find the square root of 800,000, you're going to get 894 and some decimal stuff. I mean, that's not bad, okay? Again, you're trying to find a value that is pretty close, but you, you know, you're kind of also watching the clock, okay? You can't spend an inordinate amount of time uh, when you um, estimate. Now, or, or create an estimate or try to find an estimate. Now, sometimes you need to find a more accurate, um, you know, value. And that's an estimation. That's perfectly fine. So I could refine this work, okay? And so there's a different approaches, there's different methods, but here is the bottom line. You know, you need to know, need to be um, comfortable uh, finding estimations, okay? And again, these are approximate values. So your answer may not be mine. Some of you might have gotten like 910 or, or 850. Whatever the case is, you know, this is, again, kind of more of an art form versus an exact uh, science. Okay, so for those of you that need more help with estimating, uh, you might want to check out my uh, Math Foundations course. Um, I kind of go over, you'll find a link to it in uh, the description of this video, but uh, I go over some basic uh, things about estimating and rounding that some of you might have uh, forgotten. So there's some uh, kind of basic skills, but you know, you'll be better at estimating when you learn more and more about math, right? Of course, you'd, if you didn't understand this particular property we were talking about uh, with square roots, you know, if you understood that, of course, you could do this uh, problem much, much better. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.